fully armed Bureau of Land Management Rangers who were armed up like a SWAT team. So what happens next? Bundy clearly looks ready to keep fighting, but how will the federal government proceed? And does Bundy have a legal argument? Well, whatever happens, whatever, whatever happens, we now know that when the federal government wants to use force, it can. It's just a matter of who the force is going to be used against. Welcome to your new residency. Joining me now, our Republican candidate for U.S. Congress in Nevada's 4th District, where all this is happening, Niger Innes, and with us via phone is Washington Free Beacon reporter Elizabeth Harrington, who's on location in Nevada. I'm going to start with you, Elizabeth, because you were one of the reporters that actually broke the story here for the, for the Washington Free Beacon. Um, you know, if it weren't for new media, do you think anybody would even be talking about this? I'm sorry, can you repeat that last? I, I said last if, if it weren't for the Internet and new media, do you think anybody would even be talking about this? Oh, well, I mean, it's it's definitely proven what what a powerful force really. I mean, Drudge Report and a lot of these other conservative outlets have shown. I mean, no one really was talking about this issue until it, it blew up on uh, Tuesday evening and then the rest of the week. Um, it definitely, people would not have n known about it. Uh, the, the mainstream networks were, were not reporting it, did not touch it. The local media has been covering this because, as you know, this has been going on for two decades. Um, so the, the local media has been following this, but it really didn't go national until just last week. Niger, if you win this seat, this is your district. Have you ever seen this kind of armed presence for a guy whose cows were eating grass? Well, it's not just for that guy, uh, Cliven uh, Bundy. It's for members of his family. It's for women, uh, members of his family. And it was the community of Bunkerville that felt like they were under siege. I went up there. I spent um, a, a long time with Cliven Bundy and his wonderful family, got a chance to meet them, was even fed by his wife. Uh, they're wonderful people, just regular, decent Americans. And I, I went um, driving to, to, to take a look at some of these officers, and I went and approached a couple of them, and actually one of them unstrapped their holster as I went to approach them just to say hello and introduce myself and tell them that I plan to be their congressman. Now, they calmed down, and, you know, they, 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 they were a bit more relaxed as we talked. And I told them that I don't blame them. I blame their bosses. I blame the bureaucracy. And I blame what is fundamentally wrong here in this state and in many Western states, which is that the federal government has far too much control over too much of our land here in Nevada and in other Western states as well. Liz, you were at the press conference today, so give me, give me the highlights. Sure. Well, yeah, there's still, I mean... The BLM, the Bureau of Land Management, uh, they're pretty much gone, but a lot of supporters uh, came out today. It, it just concluded uh, several hundred. Um, the Bundy family was there, and um, his son, a Eamon, who was the one that was tasered by the Bureau of Land Management officials, um, he spoke. And really the sentiment was they, they were they were proud of, of taking a stand. They, they wanted to you know, say that they felt like this was a victory, but they also uh, caution that, that this isn't over and they're going to keep fighting. Um, they really feel like this is an issue of state sovereignty over this public land. They, they want it to be ceded back to Nevada. Um, and there's, there's people from across the country, uh, close by in Arizona and Utah, but then there's others from New Hampshire. And talking to the people in the crowd, they all have similar stories of, of whether it's the Bureau of Land Management or the Fish and Wildlife Service or the Forest uh, Service or uh, Na National Park Service, they all have these stories of, of, you know, private land or public land that they were owning, whether or a railroad came in or another issue they had, this, pretty much the same stories, legal battles that go on for years, and they feel like they're no match for the federal government. And one of the speakers said, I feel like this is, this is going to start a movement that the the West is going to rise again, and they want to take back their heritage and, and, and really, you know, start a conversation about, you know, the government owning too much public land and, and not really having the proper authority, they believe, to, to do what they did in this case and in other cases to come in and take over. They think, they think it should be at the local level. You know, Nigel, I want to, I want to pick up on something you said. You know, I, I, I don't blame these law enforcement officers for doing their job. It seems like they're in a really kind of 
cruddy position. Catch, catch 22, yeah. yes. Um, you know, this is this is the thing. I don't, and I don't know why. Look, I, I know that a lot of people who observe the blaze think that we're all about the militias here showing up and we're, we're encouraging. I don't want to see any kind of civil war, bloody battle between law enforcement and militias. I don't, I don't, I don't want to see it. But let's be honest. We're talking about land that nobody uses. This is the thing that you have this, this sort of armed standoff over hundreds of thousands of acres that nobody uses. It's not like when you look at old pictures well, of Central Park and there's sheep grazing on the main lawn. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Andrew, I tell you the truth. When you dig in a little deeper and you look at the special interests that may not be using the land now, but may want to use the land for a solar plant. There are some that are alleging, and I'm saying alleged because this is not a fact, that uh, Senator Reid and his son have a special interest relationship with the Chinese solar company, and that that solar company wants some land in Nevada uh, to put their solar plant. And as a almost like a land swap exchange to environmental interests that were concerned about uh, where they were putting the solar plant as a give back to the environmentalists, they decided to uh, essentially persecute uh, Clive and Bundy and his family and harassing him not only for use of the public land, but harass him to the point and to the stage where he gets out of his private land. And all this and, and the vehicle that they're using is protecting the endangered species that is a tortoise, which the cattle that Clive and Bundy had was never a threat to. In fact, there was a, almost a reinforcement relationship, reinforcing relationship uh, in the you know the life cycle of the tortoise and the cattle, and they euthanized they were, some of the turtles. Which th none of this makes any sense, and it should be pointed out that the head of, head of the Bureau of Labor Ma of, of Labor Land Management used to work for Harry Reid. All right, Niger Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining me today.